All right, folks, so today we're going to be talking about the different ways to rig a Cheddar Bay tube. Um, you know, over to the left, you have the original Z-Man Cheddar Bait. Over to the right, you have the Thunder Cricket. And up above, um, I have a totally custom uh, Cheddar Bay tube where I've actually used a horizontal 60-degree angle jig head and then took a split ring and then combined it with a Z-Man cheddar bait blade so um, i'm going to be testing out these different types of cheddar bait tubes see which one works the best um so, you know of course see which one catches more bass and just see which one is a lot more consistent when jigging with you know having a consistent vibration uh when you start jigging it because i noticed the way i originally rigged it in the video you gotta have like some space up there um, near the eyelet so that blade can move back and forth like so. And so what I did with the original Z-Man, as you can see here, um, I kind of dealt what Matt Stefan did, was basically slice off a tip of the head of the extreme bass tackle tube and, and just slid it on and use some crazy glue to keep it just around you know the edges of the tip of the tube to keep it secure because after the you know you catch a few fish this is going to get beat up it may start to slip off of the jig head the tube that is so i put a little dab of glue but as you can see that's one way of rig rigging a chatterbait tube is just to basically take some sip scissors um clip off the top um on an angle like a 60 degree angle and then slide in the jig head and basically you know again put a little dab of glue and you as you can see here i have a variety of different colors ranging from you know lighter color tubes here and here to the darker color tubes um i think that's emerald shiner that's some type of pr custom purple color i got at the bp gas station off nine mile and this i think was the only color left which this is just out of the world. Check out that color. Isn't that amazing? I got to contact uh, Captain Wayne Carpenter. See if I can get more colors of that brownish, dark brown, light colored. It's almost like a pew color, but it's wicked, man. I've never seen anything like it, you know, in the buy limit. And of course, this was the one um, I got my first smallmouth on this year. Um, just jigging the this chatterbait tube and got it. So that's another cool color. It's got that sweet green color up above and an orange color down below. And over to the right here, as you can kind of see, instead of, you know, using the scissors to clip off the head of the tube on an angle, I just basically clipped it off near the top. Because here's the thing with the Thunder Cricket, or if you're using the jackhammer, is, you know, it's got to have room for that eyelet to wiggle. And so I've decided to just clip off the tip of the head there and then again use use some uh, super glue near the tip um, and that's the way I've rigged it and I think this is gonna work it's gonna be dynamite out there um, and the thing about the Thunder Cricket and the, um, uh, the jackhammer is you know since that eyelet you know wiggles back and forth it gives off a little more hard hitting vibration but since we're going to be jigging, and this is going to be spring, you know, hard-hitting vibration might not be all that important to smallmouth. Maybe just a little bit of light vibration. And as you can see here, the Z-Mans, they got like a silverish chrome-looking color to it. And then, you know, the um, Thunder Cricket's blades are painted black. Um, this one's actually a little chrome. So, but yeah, basically black. And then up above, talking about a different way to rig it. Um, I know you've seen these, basically these jig heads where they're basically the eyelets on a 60 degree angle and they're horizontal instead of the traditional, you know, where it's in line and it's vertical, the eyelet is to the jig head. Um, and supposedly, you know, when you rig a tube this way, it's supposed to spiral. Well, we're not doing that because of that reason, but we're doing this so we can add a split ring in. And what I've done is, you can see it right here, to have my finger, I used a hyper wire split ring where, you know, these have a strong recoil 
They're forged, really strong. Um, you don't want to use a chip, cheap spurt ring. But this, this goes back to basically what I said. You want to have that Chatterbait blade wiggling around real freely. And what if we don't even have to cut off the tip of the tube, but instead use this jig head and then use a split ring and then attach like a Z-Man Chatterbait blade or any type of Chatterbait blade for that reason. You know, Picasso, Picasso lures, they actually have bubble holes in their Chatterbait blades and there's just something to think about. You know, some people like a bubble trail when working a bladed jig. Um, but this, again, this might be, if this turns out to be a great way of rigging a Chatterbait tube, this might be the best way. That way you don't have to modify any of the soft plastic. All you gotta do is run that 60 degree angle um, horizontal jig head through the tube and then run that split ring through the eyelet and then attach the blade. Um, Cause you can't do that basically with a vertical eyelet jig head. Um, it just wouldn't turn out because you have that um, horizontal um, you know, uh, eyelet on the jig head. So, you know, everything runs in line with the tube, as you can see here, works out perfectly. Um, I just don't know if this will keep the vibration, um, the typical vibration you get from the Z-Man. As you shown, as I shown how you, you know, I was in the winter, I decided to basically just, you know, um, I didn't modify the soft plastic tube at all on the Thunder Cricket or Z-Man. And I just basically, um, you know, as I, I showed, I sliced open the tip of the head and then, you know, re, or ran the uh, jig head through the two body and then resealed it up with magnet glue. But as I showed, you, showed, you gotta have, you know, that loose, I'll, the, you gotta have that looseness for that chatter blade to do its magic, to go, you know, back and forth, create a vibration in the water. And when I just didn't leave any space in there um, and I resealed that tube up, it just lost its vibration. So, and it actually lost its consistency too. But I'm thinking, even though, you know, we didn't end mo doing any modifying of the tube, you still have this blade a lot, uh, wiggle around freely because you added in that split ring. So I think this might be the best way to rig a chatterbait too, but I gotta try it out. Um, I'm not sure this will work like I'm thinking is, but you know, test, test, test. This is what's fun about modifying layers. You can see which, you know, rig you like the best, see which one it produces when it comes to, you know, small mob bass fishing, large mob bass fishing. I mean, honestly, you may use these different rig tubes for different circumstances, like, you know, since the original Z-Man doesn't hit as hard as the Thunder Cricket and the smallmouth are a little lethargic in the spring, this might be something to start off with. But when, you know, the water warms up, you know, beginning of summer, smallmouth get a little more active, a hard-hitting chatterbait might work better even more. So, and we'll see how, you know, the vibration gives off with the split ring, with the chatterbait blade. And again, there's all types of different colors all types of different Chatterbait blades out there you can try, but I just thought this was another unique way of making a Chatterbait tube. And what gave me the eye of you, what gave me the idea of using a split ring, was um, this musky Chatterbait by T TNA Tackle. So they have these like custom made. They look like dragons jig heads, and of course, you know the eyelet on them is horizontal. And so what they do is ha add in a very heavy duty split ring and then, you know, attach your chatterbait blade. And so everything's running in line like it's supposed to, like this. And when you pull it, you know, it's going to be vibrating in the water. So in theory, hopefully this is how this one's going to work, just like those TNA eight Angry Ch Dragon chatterbait blades. But, you know, these hyperwire split rings are pretty strong. But I just, you know, hopefully that split ring will hold up. I can always go to more heavier duty one. But I have to say, doesn't that look wicked? I mean, and, you know, shout out to Z-Man. They actually, someone remarked when I posted this on a bass fishing group, I got my first smallmouth 
I was like, this is awesome. I had a post in one of the groups. One guy made the recommendation of using the new Z-Man Jackhammer Stealth Blade. And what's unique about this Stealth Blade is it's completely clear. I think it's a very hard plastic material. And it's the typical shaped coffin blade. But again, it's plastic and it's clear. And so you're not going to be getting any flash. Um, it's very invisible, see-through. And so you're basically getting, you know, just all the typical profile you see of a tube, but getting the vibration of a Chatterbait blade. And some bass fishermen are saying that new stealth blade that's clear might work better in clear water conditions. And, you know, these chrome bladed uh, Chatterbait blades might work better in murky water conditions. And that's actually when I caught that smallmouth was with this orange and green Chatterbait tube. Um, when the conditions were really murky. Now, <laughs> the weather has been so crummy out there this year in Michigan. Um, it's been tough. When I get off work, you know, it was snowing today. So I didn't get out today, but I decided to rig all these Cheddar Bay tubes up. And next time I'm out, I'm going to try out different colors, the different brands, going from Z-Man to Thinner Cricket. And I might even try this custom, you know, Cheddar Bay uh, tube that I rigged with again a 60 degree um, horizontal jig head with a hyper wire split ring and then added in a Z Man Chatterbait blade. So, anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other ideas of making a Chatterbait tube, let me hear them. Comment down in the section down below. And I mean, it just I think there's this is still. I think we, we, you know, with the chatterbait, this is still, we're still at the tip of the iceberg. We're still just at the beginning phase of just all types of ways you can rig this. Um, you know, just with all types of other different saw plastics. Um, I've seen people actually using worms. Um, you know, just a really long seven inch Berkeley power bait worm. And just something to think about, you know, fishing inland lakes or ponds. That might work. Um, but it just, the Chatterbait blade is absolutely amazing. It just amazes me that no one had, I mean, you know, shout out to Randy and Matt, Stefan, um, Randy from Intuitive Angling, you know, those, these guys are the ones that give me the idea. Um, but there's still so many ways you could rig like, you know, Chatterbait blades on musculars, such as the Medusa. Um, such as the Bulldog. So I think this is going to be a new way I can modify some of my lures. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching Titan's English and take care. It works guys, check that out. First small bass of the year on the Chatterbait tube. Get it real close. Um, right when I was letting it sit off the bottom. There you go fellas. Awesome. <laughs>